Hi, today we're going to talk about lexical and syntactic patterning. All right, so we'll start with lexical patterning. So the following are examples of lexical patterning. There's two types. There's simple lexical patterning and there's complex lexical patterning. Simple lexical patterning is the repetition of a word in its simplest form or with very, very simple changes like tense or plural change. So basically, if it has um, an inflectional morpheme as a change, then that, um, that root word, if it's repeated throughout a text, can be considered an example of simple lexical patterning. So if we look at this um, paragraph of text here, so this is taken from a website that explains um, behaviour of kittens and training kittens. Um, so you can see that kittens is repeated throughout the text. So if this was kitten and kittens repeated throughout, that that counts as simple lexical patterning. Um, if it was, for example, tending to a verb, then it would not be simple um, because that's a derivational morpheme that's um, been added onto the root word there. Um, then we also have complex lexical patterning. So that involves the use of words um, and any forms of those root words that are created through affixation um, and particularly the use of derivational morphemes. So um, in this paragraph here, so although the basic emotions are experienced by most people at some stage in their lives, they often experience them in different ways and in different circumstances. Consider embarrassment. Some people may feel embarrassed in a situation that would not cause embarrassment for others. So here we have complex lexical patterning because we've got embarrassment, um, so that's a noun, and we've got embarrassed as well. So we've got a different word class there, um, and that is what makes it complex lexical patterning. Okay, then we have syntactic patterning. So the three types of syntactic patterning are listing, parallelism, and antithesis. Listing, so we'll start with that one. Um, so listing is the process by which three or more related elements are listed one after the other. So you do need three or more, and they need to be separated by commas or bullet points um, in writing. So in speaking, um, it will be represented by commas. Um, it can be used as a cohesive device uh, to, un to reduce unnecessary repetition. So in this example, we have, I like pie, cakes, cats, sports, and reading, but I don't like doing all of those things at the same time. So here we've got the list of things that the person does like. It eliminates unnecessary repetition because if we think about how we would um, otherwise have to say it, you'd have to be saying, I like pie, and I like cakes, and I like cats, and I like sports. So it's very, very repetitive. So the, the in that sense, that's what... Um, that, Sorry, that's what makes it a cohesive device. Parallelism is when two or more phrases, clauses or sentences are structurally very similar um, and appear next to each other in a text. So parallelism makes texts easier to process as the constructions are predictable and expected because you might have, you've just seen them um, just before. So, for example, the meal was beautifully prepared, expertly cooked and tantalisingly aromatic. So this is an example of parallelism because we have an adverb um, and then the verb. Okay, so beautifully prepared, expertly cooked, tantalisingly aromatic. So that is um, easier for us to process and understand in that format because we've got a sense of a pattern there. Antithesis is the use of parallelism, but with the addition of juxtaposing meaning. So juxtaposing meaning um, kind of opposite. So often these are antonyms. Antithesis can be used to make contrasts more effective in text and really make the, the audience listen to and notice the contrast and the effect of the contrast and what it means. So for example, there's a long version and a short version. Which do you want? Okay, so there's um, the parallelism of um, the... Uh, adjective noun, adjective noun, but we've got long and short are uh, antonyms, um, so that's what makes it antithesis. Okay, I would like you now to go and complete the um, lexical and syntactic patterning uh, task that's on their Google Classroom.